take a look at this long, ugly blue string. Does it make sense to you? If not, you should watch this video because it will by the end. If it already makes sense, you should just like the video, comment with a bunch of loving, supportive, and kind comments, and make sure to subscribe to the channel. Okay, hey everyone, it's Colt. And today we're talking about customizing your bash prompt. So how do we take this hideous black and white prompt and change it into a still hideous, but slightly more colorful prompt? So we'll talk about things like changing colors, but most of what we're gonna chat about is how we change the information that's actually displayed. So how do we add the time in? How do we change the actual text here? Or something more complicated like this example, where the prompt color changes, there's an emoji that changes depending on the status of your command. If you type something valid, it's green, we get a rainbow. If you type an invalid command, it turns red and there's a fire emoji. So how do we do all of that? We'll talk about it in this video. But first, I have to be annoying and ask you to subscribe if you haven't subscribed, please like this video if you do actually like it, and leave comments. Uh, I've been pretty active in responding to students, so yeah, please leave comments. Also, some of you know, uh, I've been in the middle of a move for the past week or so. I was supposed to move last week, and there was a huge rainstorm. I packed my entire apartment up and my studio equipment, and then the move was canceled because of the rainstorm. So... My life is still in boxes. Um, I am doing this in a makeshift studio. I don't have my camera and all of that, so hopefully that's not a problem. Should be back pretty soon. All right, let's get on with it. Where do we start? The first thing we have to know is the PS1 variable. I believe it stands for prompt script one. So I'm gonna hop over to my terminal. I'm just using the built-in terminal app on my Mac. Any bash shell will work. So I'm gonna type PS1 equals, and whatever I type in here will become my new prompt. Although it will be temporary, it won't actually take a, a permanent effect unless I add it to my bash profile, which we'll do at the end. So everything we do now, you can open up a new terminal window and it will not have those changes. So if I type LOL and an arrow mark and I add a space just to make it nicer, my prompt changes. So I have my same commands. It still is you know, identical. I just don't have this information I had before. Anytime I do anything, I'm looking at LOL arrow. Okay, so that's the first most basic thing. We're going to work with this variable. I should mention there's also a PS2, PS3, and PS4. No, not PlayStations. Uh, PS2 is the one that I have seen sometimes changed. The other three or the other two are sort of obscure. But if you change PS2, what it actually refers to, if you don't finish a command, like if you type a quote and you don't end it, your prompt changes, at least mine does, to this little character, and it's waiting for me to finish. If I change PS2 to be keep typing, buddy, now if I open a quote and don't finish it, my secondary or the PS2 variable is being displayed. Okay, so typically we don't change that as much. Usually we're not just displaying static information like go away or LOL. Although if you just wanted an arrow, then you could easily do that. Usually we add in some special information using these special characters. There are a series of these characters. This is a small subset, some of the more commonly used ones. So if we take one of them, like backslash, is that backslash? I think, I can never remember which one's back and forwards, but this character backslash, I'm gonna call it D, will get the current date. So if we did something like backslash u in this example, that's your username of the current user. So if we did PS1 equals, in quotes, I am, and then backslash u, and then we put that in, let's just try it out, change our prompt, it now says I am recording user. So on my computer, you know, I have a bunch of different users. I have my regular user with all my top secret information that I don't want students seeing. And then I have a couple of recording sort of dummy accounts that have very little installed on them. Anyway, so that's why I'm called recording user. So that's our new prompt. We could also do things like, go back to this, I am slash you. Let's look at what slash D gives us. It gives us the date. Uh, there's other ways of formatting the date, by the way. I'm not gonna go into them in this video, just to keep it brief. We can get time, backslash T, it's gonna give us this format of time, uh, where we're talking about 24 hour clock. We also can do a 12 hour with capital T, and you can do 12 hour where we have AM and PM using the Wow, this really looks screwed up, but it's the at character. So we can try that as well. If we plug that in. Okay, so 9.36 p.m. instead of 21.36. Anyway, uh, there's a couple of other options. A, a really common one is to display the path to your current working directory so you know where you are. So that is backslash W, lowercase w. So we can do that. 
A lot of times you'll see colons and different symbols, dashes, just to separate out the different pieces of information. So if we do backslash W, the folder I'm in right now is called stuff. If I go into top secret, now it changes to stuff slash top secret. So already there's a lot we can customize. We can display, I guess another common one is the host name. So backslash H, what you'll often see looks like this. PS1 equals backslash host name colon backslash username or U recording user, or you'll see it with an at sign as well. So just to be very clear, you have to have those backslashes in there to actually use a special character. Obviously, if I just did HU, my prompt is now huh, huh. It's not very good. <laughs> Another thing to keep in mind is potentially adding space afterwards. You may not want your prompt right up against it. Uh, it's up to you. Let's now talk about coloring them. So kind of crazy, but this is the hardest part. This is the most annoying thing. Uh, you'd think that there would be a nice syntax. It is gross. It is not attractive at all. I should start by saying that all bash prompts, all shells support at least eight bare minimum colors. There are other variations uh, and you can change the values of these colors, but there are eight slots for colors. Let's put it that way. Some apps, some terminals will support 256, but we're just going over the basic colors here. So these are the color codes we have to use and they are very gross and it's impossible for me to ever remember them. I should have said this earlier, but uh, you know, you change your prompts pretty rarely, at least I do. Um, I don't remember any of this stuff. I just look it up if I'm ever tweaking it. So what we do is we take these color codes, but we have to wrap them with these other characters that are equally gross that designate a non-printing sequence. So everything we've done so far is being printed out. Yes, we might be using a special character like backslash U, but it's still actually being displayed. But this, if we use the backslash square bracket, at the beginning and then put a color code and then another backslash closing square bracket after the color code that says, okay, don't print this out. This is going to be a color. There are other things we can do besides colors. You could change the, the uh, boldness, I guess, text decoration. You can underline, you can make things flash, blink, different things, but we're just focusing on color. So here is an example. Here we're setting PS1 equal to a string. We are starting with this non-printing sequence character. Then we have it closing over here. And inside what we have is backslash E33M, which if you check on this chart is yellow. And then whatever text comes afterwards is going to be yellow. So let's just copy this and try it. Come over here. This is my prompt, hit enter. Now my prompt says, make me yellow, and it's actually in yellow. However, everything is in yellow. If I type LS, everything's yellow. Um, you know, looking at folders and files, everything is going to be yellow because what I did was basically say, all right, bash, everything's yellow from here on out. It doesn't read it as make this yellow and nothing else. Make everything yellow after this, which includes all of this stuff. So we can escape it at the end. We can basically add in this other sequence, I have a note on it, to reset the color. So the, this color code, if you do backslash E O or zero zero M, this basically says remove color, go back to the default color. So we could tweak this a bit. After we say, make me yellow, we can come in and do our start of a non-printing sequence, paste in this color code, and then end the non-printing sequence. Now copy this over, back over here, paste it in. It still looks yellow, but now my text is back to black, the default color. So as I type things, it says things are displayed to me, printed out, it's no longer yellow. Now let's take a look at this massive thing I showed you at the beginning. That's very ugly. I'm going to paste it in. What do we have going on? Well, there's a lot to see, and I'm not saying these are the colors I use. Usually I actually just do a very high contrast black and white so that it's easier for my students to see on all screen sizes but I want to include a lot of information in this example. I should mention your actual color values will look different. Uh, I'll show you how to change the colors that are being used behind the scenes, but let's uh, break it down. Let's try and figure out what is going on. So first of all, what's the information? Ignoring the colors. Well, we have time, so backslash T. We have here the username at my host name, which is Colts MacBook Pro, colon, then what we have is the path to our current working directory, basically PWD, which we saw was, what is it, backslash W. 
So we can begin by recreating this by just writing down those base pieces. So we have backslash t for time, and then after that we have a dash or hyphen or whatever that's called, and then the username, so let's do that. So it's backslash t dash backslash u for username, at, yep, at sign, and then the host name. Okay, at sign over here, and then host name backslash h, and then we have one more thing, which is actually there's a colon there. I think I meant to make that black, honestly. But here we have backslash w to get the current path, the working path where we are. So backslash w. And let's just see what that gives us and compare it. So I'm going to paste it in. And it's close. I forgot the dollar sign. And I also forgot a colon after the host name. So let's add that in. Go back. So after host name, we had a colon. After the w, there's a dollar sign. And I think there's a space at the very end. If we just notice right now, I'm right up against this. Earlier, I wasn't. There's a bit of space there. One more time, this is the same structure, the same information. It's quite long. Honestly, I, I don't know why I would never display all of this information, but I'm just trying to make it somewhat more challenging. And also, I wouldn't want the whole time there. I don't want students to see what time I'm recording things. It's not good. Okay, so now let's colorize things. So this first one is, it looks purple, but the actual color I used is magenta. So the color code for magenta, I'm gonna copy it, 35M. Then I'm gonna come down to the time. And first I wrap it with our non-printing sequence. Then I paste that color code in right here. And then after the M, I close the non-printing sequence. So right now it should make everything magenta, or for me, purple. So the next thing to do is going to make this dash hyphen thing to be black. That's kind of annoying that we have to go and, and add all of those characters in. So to make it black, this is the code, copy it. And then we go find further down right here. There's the hyphen. Do the backslash open square brace, paste that in, backslash close square brace. And now everything is black afterwards including the hyphen. So now we go back in here and change this color. And I think you can see where I'm going with this. I won't make you watch every part of it, but let's just look at the completed version. So here's a completed version. It might look a little different. It is different. All of these zero three threes, what are those? Okay, so you can also do backslash E, which is what I've been showing you for the color codes, but you may see this online, zero three three. So just to show you, it's identical. I'm gonna put this in here. Okay, so we have that one version, and here's the second version where I replaced all the 033s with E's. And you can see I already pasted it in. It's the exact same result. So I prefer the backslash E. It's easier. It's still very ugly with all the colors, uh, color codes and symbols, but it's slightly shorter than 033. So that's the basics of customizing the information and changing colors. However, there are some fancier things you can do. I'm not going to go into how it all works. Frankly, I don't actually know a lot about it because there's a whole bunch of things you can do. So this is one example I tweaked from a great article I found uh, about different things you can do to your bash prompt. You can display what a lot of people do is display get information about the current branch, um, commit status. There's a whole bunch of options that you can take from this website. I'll include it in the description You can change the colors, you know, tweak things. But the first one, what it does is it basically will check if your, your previous statement that you typed in executed successfully or not. And it will conditionally display information. So it originally had a happy face, sad face. You can see the happy face. Oh, just lost it. Right there, there's a happy face and there's a sad face in there as well. I changed it to be emoji. But what we're looking at here, all of this right here is a conditional statement. So if, and we're checking, it's the result of grep comes back, basically if the status is good, then we're going to display this. Otherwise, display this if the status was not good. And then the if, the if statement ends here. Sort of a weird syntax. That's not really what we're focusing on. Um, and then afterwards, the rest of the prompt. So let's, uh, let's play around with it. There we go. So I've got that rainbow emoji. I type ls, that's valid. Now if instead I type something that doesn't make sense, we get a fire emoji. All right, so there's a lot to, that you can do. There's a lot of tools to help you. There are tools online that will build the, the string, so you can just copy and paste it in if you prefer to do it visually. 
but hopefully this makes sense now. Uh, nobody, well, very few people could look at this and understand it uh, just by, you know, glancing at it. It's very alien and unintuitive. But if you piece it together, we're just putting in little symbols that say, put this here, make it this color. Um, so it's not so bad. It's just ugly and old and sort of a very dated syntax. The last thing I should touch on is how you actually change the values of these colors. So this is magenta. Although I don't think this is actually magenta. The color that's being displayed is more like a purple. So to actually change those values, you can go into the preference. There's a couple ways, but the way I'll show you is to open up the preferences of the terminal app you're using, which on a Mac you can do, you can do with command comma or go up to the, the file menu and go to preferences. And if I select one of these, first of all, okay, it resets a new window. But if I make it larger, my prompt went away. That's okay, but I'm gonna paste it back in. Now you can see I have real magenta displaying and real cyan, and I can tweak those. If I wanna change the value of magenta, I can go here, I can make it green. I can change those colors, um, it's totally up to you. So I have one that I made, and I've set it to be the default here, and you can do that on a Mac by selecting one of these. So you can make a new color set down here, select it and click default. Anyway. Now, how do we actually get our prompt to save, right? So I don't want to type this every time I want to use that prompt. How do I get it to save? Here's what we need to do. You need to find your bash profile. So it is a hidden file that you should already have. And if for some reason you don't have it, you can go ahead and make it. Uh, and the place it should be, you should look there first, is in your home directory. So the tilde character slash, and then it's a hidden file. So it starts with dot. So if I go to mine, over my terminal, I'm already in the tilde, the home directory. There's a couple things in here, uh, but if I typed ls-a, there's a lot of stuff in here that wasn't showing up before. One of those is the hidden bash profile file. So if it's not there for you, you could put it there and we'll open it up. So I'll just use my default text editor, bash profile. This is what I see. You'll probably see something different. Uh, usually mine has a lot more stuff, but this is my recording user, so there's not much to look at. So we can paste in our prompt, but what we do want to add is export, not capital. I don't know if that makes a difference. I've never done capital. So export PS1 equals whatever your new prompt is, and if you wanted to change PS2, for example, you'd put it in here in, in order to make it permanent. Then you save the file. It has to be saved, and you can close out or just leave it open. Now, whenever we make a new window, I just made a new one, it now has my new prompt. It's saved. I don't have to type it in every time and hit enter. It's actually here. And there we go. So that's the basics of changing your bash prompt. All right. And if you do want this as a reference, the link to my notes here, uh, these will be available as a link online. You can find them. Uh, I'll have it in the description as well. Okay. Thanks for watching. Please, you know, like the video, comment, subscribe. Actually, please do subscribe. It makes a big difference. Uh, also, sign up for notifications. If you don't have those on, you'll get notified when I send out a survey to figure out what I teach next. Okay, blah, blah, blah. Thank you for watching. Bye.